During the 80s and 90s, Annex was going strong with its Dragon Quest series known early on as Dragon Warrior in North America. I still remember receiving my copy via a mail-in order from Nintendo Power for around $15 shipping and handling. In my mind, I had just received my first free video game and I was super excited to play it. Not only did Dragon Warrior meet all my expectations, it was the first JRPG I had ever beat. Over the years, Annex would release a decent amount of great games, but to me, Squaresoft was more of a household name. I've always wondered what what happened to Annex and how did they become partners with Squaresoft? With the help of the internet and Wikipedia, let's find out on what happened to Annex. Before I dive in, I want to say that these company names are very difficult to pronounce. So for the sake of not butchering them, I'll just display the names on the screen. Annex dates all the way back to 1975, where they would originally be known as this company name. They would not produce video games, but would instead publish tabloids that advertise real estate. They were a long ways from video games at this point and would continue publishing tabloids until 1980 when they would establish a real estate sales and brokerage company known as this, which was a wholly owned subsidiary of the parent company. In 1981, they would change the subsidiary's name to this and move its headquarters to Tokyo, Japan. Like I said, these company names are extremely difficult to pronounce and thankfully in August of 1982, they would change the subsidiary name to Annex Corporation. With the new company name and a failed attempt from the parent company to go nationwide in 1982, they would begin their journey into the world of video games. Their initial descent in the world of video games came in the form of a computer game programming contest. The first of those winners was the Dragon Quest series creator who won the contest with his game Love Match Tennis. The tennis game would go on to become one of Annex's first computer games released. Another winner was the puzzle game Door Door, created by the director of the Dragon Quest series. While Door Door would see a Famicom port, it would never have a release outside of Japan. Annex would not handle any development in-house of these games and instead would outsource all development to other companies by way of a royalty system. Even their most popular game, Dragon Quest, was developed by Chunsoft. In 1989, Annex Corporation would merge into the original company, along with two of its sister companies, Konica Annex and Annex Products. They would rename the entire entity to just Annex Corporation. Over the next few years, Annex would continue building relationships with different video game developers, leading to more games published under the Annex name. With the release of the Sony PlayStation in 1994 and the Nintendo 64 in 1996, their longtime competitor Squaresoft would make a decision that would not only shock Nintendo fans, but would also lead Annex to make a move they thought would benefit the company drastically. Squaresoft decided due to cheaper cost of CDs versus cartridges, they would become exclusive to the Sony PlayStation. I know personally before I owned a PlayStation 1, I received a Nintendo 64 for Christmas, and as a longtime Final Fantasy fan, I was super bummed that Squaresoft was not going to release any of the Final Fantasy games for the Nintendo 64. Because of this, Annex announced in 1997 they would be releasing games for both the Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 in order to appeal to a wider audience. The move would work, causing the company's stock to rise significantly. Even with these significant gains, it would not protect them from the issues they started having in 1999 when Dragon Quest VII was delayed. They were expecting the sales from Dragon Quest VII to hit during the fiscal year 1999. However, when the game was delayed until 2000, it would cut the company's profit to sales ratio in half and cause the company's stock value to drop 40%. They would be hurt once again in 2001 when Dragon Quest Monsters 2 was delayed causing the first half of 2001 fiscal year profit to drop by 89%. 
Due to all the financial losses, Enix would start shopping around for a partnership with Square and Namco being at the top of their list. They would also around this time invest in the company Game Art, acquiring 99 million worth of stock shares in order to publish Grandia 2 for the PlayStation 2. When Annex started looking into the partnership with Square, Square would also have financial issues in 2001 due to the box office failure of its feature film Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. And according to the former chairman of Annex, this made the company think twice before committing to the partnership. However, in 2002, a deal was reached and the two companies merged in 2003, forming Square Enix. According to Wikipedia, Enix was also involved in the publication of manga, fingerprint identification systems, and the distribution of broadband sports content. I won't dive into these portions of the company because I felt it best to keep this about the video game side of the company. Annex will always be best remembered for its Dragon Quest series, which is still going strong today via the new partnership Square Annex. Like a lot of companies that hit their stride in the 80s and 90s, they just couldn't survive alone. But thanks to the great leadership in the company, their name will continue alongside one of the greatest JRPG creators of all time, Squaresoft. Thanks for joining me on what happened to Annex. If I missed any key information about the company you feel should have been included in this video, please post in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, like the video, and follow me on social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.